Okay, today we're going to work with polygons and circles. So what I want you to do first is draw a rectangle between the green and red axes. That's going to be our ground plane. So once you have that done, you can take your push-pull tool and just pull it up some height that feels comfortable. What we want to do is take the pencil tool and we're just going to draw down uh, once that line is uh, pink, that means it's at a midpoint, we're going to push-pull over and get rid of that plane. Now what I want to do is grab a circle, and we want to draw that circle on one face of our object. So I'll select that face, and just click there and open that circle up a little bit, and click again, and you'll have a nice uh, circle sitting right there. Right now my circle is probably in about 16 different pieces, and that's why it kind of looks like that. We want to draw a concentric circle, meaning a circle inside the circle. So I'm going to select the circle command again, let it sit out, infer that geometry so it knows where to go. Click the center point and draw it open just a little bit there. We'll now click that closed, and back we go to our push-pull tool. So we're going to grab the push-pull tool and put that out some distance. And now I want to do something that's kind of interesting. Uh, if this were calling for a tapered uh, bearing or outcropping, what we do is we click on our circle, get the edge there, and click on Entity Info. Right now we have a radius, and we're going to take that radius and make it just slightly smaller. So I'm going to make it from 4, 9 to 3, and you'll see a big change in the taper of that cylinder we just pulled out there, or that arm. So that's how you uh, easily taper using the Entity Info, and we're going to get some other Entity Info in here as well pretty soon. So I can change this uh, inside how many parts the circle is in. I can change that by looking at the radius or the segments. Right now I can't change it because it's already been done for me and I'm out of that command. So what we're going to do is kind of hang out and not use that one. We're going to put another uh, circle on the other face as well as a polygon so we can see the differences in what that geometry actually looks like. And as you can see, there's really nothing I can do with the segments because it's already been spoken for. And so it's too late for that. So we'll just not worry about that. We'll do it on the uh, side face. So what you want to do is orbit around a little bit. Uh, go back to your polygon command. Actually, we'll do the circle and put it on that face. Open it up a little bit and click. Now it's closed. And now what we can do is click on that circle, get the entity info, and we can change the segments. Right now it's 12, we'll change that to 8, and hit enter, and now I've got an octagon as opposed to a 12-part uh, circle. So that's how you change uh, circles with different sides. We're going to get our polygon tool, open that up. This is a six-sided object right now. And maybe I want to change that to another amount of sides. So what I'll do is I'll come in here, use my selection tool. There's my entity. And we can change an eight-sided over to, actually we'll take the radius down a little bit, and make the circle, or now the octagon and the hexagon, the same size. So I'll click on the hexagon now and make that the same size as my octagon and enter and that's going to be done. We can also change the segments from 6 to 8 and now we have two octagons. That's how you manipulate those uh, entities. But what you're going to see here is because one is a circle and the other one is actually a polygon, you'll see a difference in the geometry and the way it comes out. 
One is a softened edge, and the other is a, a, a hard uh, segmented geometry. So what you can do if you want to view your hidden geometry is hit View, Hidden Geometry, and now you can see all of the actual hidden geometry that's there, uh, not shown unless you want to pick up your hidden geometry and show that. That's going to become important here in just a little bit. So we're kind of uh, going to take another, just back out of all of those entities right there. I don't want to see the octagons anymore. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, simply control Z until all those are, are gone. So let's get a bare face again, control Z, that's all out of the way now. I'm going to grab a circle again, but this time I'm going to put it interestingly right on that front face, and you'll see that it's a straight up and down circle. Uh, I can get rid of half that circle by clicking on the top half of it, and now I'm left with half a circle that I'm going to pull out from that area. Once again, there's a softened edge there, and uh, if you would like to pull out some more, you have to hit Control to make a copy of that, and you can see that line show up, but right now I still have a softened uh, edge to that. What I'm trying to do is get an edge that's actually uh, something I can manipulate. If I wanted to make a shape that was a keyway, uh, I would need something that actually showed an edge, and right now I don't have that. So what I need to do is come back in, make that controlled pull again, but this time I need to click on the outside uh, circle and explode that circle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull that out a little bit more, uh, and I want to explode the circle. Right now there's no command for exploding that circle because I haven't clicked on it. So I have to go back there and make that happen. Yep, there's no command. So I'll go back in, uh, push that back kind of where I can get it to the same place. Okay, and now I'm going to go in, select that circle. Once I do that, there's that exploded circle. Now when I come out and pull this, you'll notice that it's I've created that polygon again. I've got that polygon uh, look as opposed to the circle look, so I created a polygon from it. I'm going to now click on that circle, explode it, and this is where I can create uh, some geometry. So I will get rid of that little bit of circle there, and now I can start to use that as a keyway. If I need to push things in separately, that's a good way to go in and be able to do that. Push one more here, orbit around just a little bit more, and I will push in that third one. So now we have something that's like a, a keyway for another machine part. All right. So we're done with those sides now. What I'm going to do finally is go to this back side here. I just want to quickly show you how easily you can look inside an object. If I select this and right-click Erase, now you're inside the object. So if you were actually building inside of that object uh, gears and whatnot, you could get in there and uh, check that out when you needed to check it out or actually build within it. All right, well, that's it for now. Uh, thanks so much, and have a great one.